No, no, no. Thank, Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Kirsten. And I, I, I guess it, it would not be um, out of place to, to, to do a, a round of applause first for Kirsten for making this all possible. Thank you. I enjoyed today the, the expansion of my network. Um, and um, uh, yeah, so I, I jotted down a few thoughts that, that really just sort of came up during the day, connecting one presentation to another. It's not a linear thing. Um, and I got back to, 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 the, to our title, which is uh, um, uh, one of those where uh, it, there's both a problem and a solution to the problem, um, but we still managed to renegotiate and reformulate it to some extent today. Um, I mean, we're meant to be decolonizing uh, and we do that through telling our tales. It, it's there, the problem and the solution. Um, and it led to presentations about with, about, with and through photographs to speak about ambiguous photography and the gestures that could contribute to the decolonizing of the visual library of the African continent, where this decolonizing has been uh, repeatedly problematized by our own right, and very rightfully so. Um, and we could, we could reformulate it to a uh, redistribution of gazes, voices, traditions, conventions, through scholarship and artistic intervention, which I think we both have seen demonstrations of today. Um, rethinking the notions of gaze and voice as productive factors in the diversifying of a visual library. And of course, rethinking the forms in which these gazes and voices manifest. Uh, and that, that brings us immediately back to this about with and through. When are they confirming or even reinforcing problematic conventions and traditions, and when are they productive as decolonial gestures? Then um, brought up uh, in the morning was, this, was the issue of censorship in terms of expression of, of certain traditions and conventions related to the production and uses of photographs, which I think um, would be hugely um, productive to problematize more. Uh, in terms of also the factors that are frustrating the ability to produce photographs, of which um, Danny, I think, gave us a really nice demonstration uh, recalling his past and the restriction of camera ownership. Mm. And also while giving us uh, a huge variety of insights into conventions he is dealing with, that he is, he is part of himself and, and trying to actually made stronger in Zambia and, pro and productive within his own context. Um, then I heard you say we understand the notion of the gaze, and then your quote, of course, went on, and I, but, but this always triggers with me. Uh, do we actually? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I know I'm incomplete here, <laughs> but it's for me always this. Um, also, because my own research, my PhD research, started off from thinking I understood photography photographs and then I went on researching photographs in Uganda and it turned out that that was the wrong question that I, or that I started from the wrong premise. Of course that's the who is the we that you emphasized. Are there understandings of photographs that do not aid diversifying of the visual library actually? Also a question that keeps popping up with me. Which cases are appreciated? Why and by whom? Which is where I have some reservations by everyday Africa because it's such a particular visual language that has been developed also there. And then the paradox of photography and the generation of a visibility that can also be a factor in limiting rather than expanding the imagination. In the discussion. <laughs> We're making more connections there. What do we need to know about colonial power structures to be able to shift them? It's another sort of red herring in the room. Um, and then I really like Let's what happens see. when Warren's macro photographs were presented to us because it's, well, I think it's something that for me always happens with macro photographs because it's a literal expansion of the gaze of what my eyes can see. It goes beyond photographs take me there beyond what my eyes can see. Um, and make me then also question what my brain, that makes me help to interpret what I see, the things I know. Um, and lastly, something that sort of loosely uh, came from Louise's presentation was how do the qualities of sub sub subjective renderings um, that are presented, or that, that we've seen numerous examples of today, 
relate to the limitations that I think are there when we start speaking about universal languages. So th these are the things I sort of, um, would love to continue conversations on, be it here now or take in any direction you wish. So I'll, I'll look around who wants to say something, but just uh, speak up if, I, if, I, if I'm looking in the wrong direction. And we have Musingi back. So if you have thoughts, yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Well, I'll just say something to the gays. Well, I, yeah. I wasn't saying that we actually, I was saying that we actually understand what that, that, that we should be thinking about. Who took the picture, whose story, why it was taken, who took it, why they took it, and what narrative they were telling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. So it's also a complicating of all that. Yeah, not that, that we understand, because I, I, I have that problem with that word too, the gays, but that we're having this conversation now. Mm -hmm. Who took the pictures and how do we read them? How do we read pictures taken in the past in the 21st century. Yeah. You read them differently than the 20th century people read them. Oh, so, exactly. that, so, that. so it's, it's these <laughs> different subjectivities that are connected to you. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I mean, just to complicate that, I think one of the problems with people just seeing images these days is often all of that stuff is stripped out. I mean, Pinterest, you know, has no links to where photographs came from or anything like that, and anybody can just put up anything, which doesn't give you the context at all. You know, so in some way, researchers are going in and accentuating this, but in other ways, in our general, or people's general perception of images from around the world, they, they just all disappears again. Oh uh, yeah, I which guess is, that is... Which is a danger. Yeah, it's too bad that Andy left us, but, but I guess that that's, you know, the, the, these flip sides of, of digital availability. Yeah. It, it generates a huge potential of making new connections, but at the same time, still making connections. Yeah, and things being really appropriate. Yeah. Well, oh, that's I, it, it. It disappeared <laughs> when I tra when I when I when when I tried to over organize my own. But yes, appropriation is actually a word that it was there once or twice, but actually surprisingly little it was used today. Yeah, yeah I, I think the the fact that uh, software programs script map that is highly problematic. Researchers used to annotate quite carefully <coughs> the images, but now they don't. So Photoshop scripts metadata, yeah. uploading scripts metadata. If you don't know what you're doing, if you're not very, very careful until you find these photographs, you have no idea. You, you might not have a photographer say, but you don't have the context, you don't have the people, you don't have the backstory, all of which matter, I think. But you do have the potential of, of new connections. Some, I, me Googling today, uh, or immediately going into the, the, the digital library of Cambridge made me see uh, at least a dozen photographs that I can add information to that I know because of researching in Uganda. Yeah. So, yeah. That enriching factor is also there. Okay. Yeah, well, I have a comment. I have a question and a comment. The question is, I still don't quite understand what you actually mean by decolonizing the visual library. <laughs> <laughs> so because obviously the whole thing is based on that, so that is that's the question. I didn't come up with the title. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there, there were built on a on a um, on a conference session you organized last yeah. year. Yeah. Well, one of the things that we found kind of that there's a lot of discussion about decolonizing set institutions uh, at the moment. And one of the, uh, so libraries are very active in uh, looking at their contents and uh, and how they present the work they have, their archives. Um, sometimes it feels, or, or one of the things we felt was kind of that the photographic material seemed to be secondary to some of the written material that's we examined. Um, and this is where this title came from, to say like, we also need to look at the visual, and we also need to be uh, actively contributing to the visual library as it exists. So there's, a, I think it's a two-prong approach. One of it is to, to re-examine what is there, and on the other hand also, what's missing and how can we contribute to, to that. <laughs> yes, I don't know if it's if it's working, no, but we and even there. It's there. That's, 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 that's
bridge and make it more available. Yeah. Sorry, say that again. Read and make it more available. It, it? But it's more than making it available, I think. It, it's the, uh, because if you make something available, you, you ask somebody to look for it. So, you know, kind of, I can make everything available. If nobody knows it's there, uh, then it's kind of pointless of me making it available. So I think there needs to be a, something deeper than making things available. <coughs> there needs to be an active outreach, uh, an, an, an active engagement with the material. And I think that the, the notion of the library here was, oh, you are here. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was gonna say, I think, I think yeah. what, um, what Kirsten said is really, kind of hit the nail on the head because you, we, as an archive, we we think about the text and we read the text and it's very easy to say those words bad, those words are good, that's a positive thing, that's a negative thing. <coughs> with a with a photograph, you're, there are many more layers to how you can interpret that. There's, there's who took it, there's who's looking at it, there's what you're seeing, what's going on around that that you're not seeing. Whereas with text, it's very easy to see the word and say that, okay, we can't use that word anymore. That's the, uh, that's the how, inherent yeah, ambiguity how, of, of How do you look at the picture and say, well, yeah. is that right? Is that wrong? What's, what's going on here? You have to think about it a lot more. And the library in this case was a bit of a metaphorical, okay. mm, rather than a, okay. yeah, and that was the second one. And then, and then the comment is that, I've uh, been downstairs, I've saw the exhibition, I was here all day, and I noticed that Africa is a huge continent. In the north it spreads from Egypt and in the east to Morocco in the west, and from the south it goes down all the way down to South Africa. I noticed that other than a mention of two people by Louise, one uh, Egyptian photographer and one Moroccan photographer. It was all about sub-Saharan Africa, mm. all black Africa. Mm. But Africa is more than that. Yes, uh, and um, I mean, it's always difficult. It's like when I speak about Europe or about the Americas, yeah. you know, so there's always assumptions being made. Well, the, reason, the reason is that did that concentrate on the Africa that used to be colonized in Africa, mm -hmm. as well as um, decolonizing the visual life? Was it also colonized Africa from the physical point of view? Was that the idea? Not only not the whole of Africa. No, I don't think necessarily, but very often in discussions about Africa, you know, the the focus is on sub-Saharan Africa, you're absolutely right. Uh, it seems kind of that a lot of Northern Africa fits in much more with the Middle East and kind of the, that art but movement. Yeah, that physically. No, 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 I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that's right. I'm just saying kind of that a lot of the discussions that happen seem to be kind of Middle Eastern <coughs> and kind of so North, America, uh, North Africa and, and, and the Middle East seem to form a natural kind of alliance. I understand. Uh, so that that not so that doesn't make it right. I, I just say that that's very it often happened it within the other Africa. Yeah. And so yes we I think it is good so that we heard of Africa kind of like we we didn't hear of so many countries today. You know we heard really kind of only by name but maybe yeah, four name different about, countries. About four or five. Yeah. yeah. So and we, we are assuming that we spoke for the whole continent and we definitely didn't. Uh, so um, I think that is quite important as well to be emphasized. It's always difficult, uh, you know, with, with anything that has Africa in it uh, because it's so general. Mm. Uh, it always has to be general. But I think we are not, in many times we are not yet there that you would have kind of a a specific seminar or, uh, or a specific a whole day on Ghanaian photography or, or Kenyan photography. It is still quite broad, but I think it's coming. You know, you know, Mali has already kind of a photography scene that we haven't mentioned at all today, and which is thriving. And uh, so has Senegal. You know, Nigeria. 
we haven't mentioned at all today. I think there's so many, oh no, we have mentioned, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> uh, but uh, Nigeria as well. So, so, so there's really thriving photography scenes that probably could do symposiums on that country on its own. Uh, so kind of a, what we tried today was kind of a broader stroke and probably not satisfactory for anybody. Well, uh, for everybody. It's a nice addition to my question about the, the qualities, but also the limitations and the challenges of these subject, subject, subjective renderings and, and what they bring versus the reduction that is that is in, in, in even even bringing up universalities. Mm. It, that, that will always be there. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's it, so, we, I think somebody mentioned uh, Mark Seeley. Yes. Me, right, yeah. okay. I, I think it's really interesting that we haven't spoken about uh, the organization Autograph, mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. which yeah. is a very, uh, in terms of a visual library, mm -hmm. it's an amazing development yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. in the UK. They put together, it's been over 30 years that Mark's been putting this collection oh, together. Yeah. And what's interesting is that he very, you, very rarely, I haven't heard him actually use this term, um, decolonization, being a rather modest, or saying that they're going to deal with the whole continent. They've tried to put together a collection of black photography yeah. and then to actually evolve a practice around that that involves exhibitions and residencies and so on. And so I think that, uh, if I may about go back to this decolonizing thing, I think that we, um, because I work with, in the museum sector as well, I think we shouldn't get issues confused because that term was specifically invoked to deal with stolen artifacts and mm -hmm. all of that politics. And it's migrated into other sectors. And I think if it migrates in this way, we need to be careful what exactly we're saying when we say something like we're going to decolonize the visual library. Because that's a huge statement. And we need to unpick it. Really, what are we talking about? What does that actually mean? Well, then that's, that's I think, why we still need to be having this conversation. I mean, I, I had to speak to my senior managers and have a discussion around how I should frame things because as a big institution, the University of Cambridge is, is set up a working group to look at the issue of decolonization on a broader political level and until that working group reaches a <coughs> policy. There's very, uh, it's very muddy water to say certain things, to make certain decisions. We can't put in place policies around our digital archive until the top people in the university decide on the policy. So until that happens, I think this this conversation has to reach down into all of these different um, areas so that we can Yeah, it's also where out. us artists yeah. who are maybe a bit a little less institutionalized may come in handy sometimes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, yeah. use and abuse us in that sense. But I always uh, many things going on here. Um, probably just to focus um, uh, missing the can you can you hear us? Yes, sir. Yeah. Can you hear us? Probably. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, pro probably if I put a question to Miss Inge, uh, it would be useful. Do you, wait, yeah. do you take the laptop and then bring it back to me so we can yeah. all hear <laughs> Can you hear me, Miss Inge? Yes, yes, yeah. I can hear you. Oh, oh. Oh. So, so far, I've seen a bit. I may have to, I may have to step outside. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 We we are we are talk, we are um, we are debating about we are talking about uh, decolonizing um, photographs, photographic libraries. Um, yes. Uh, we have different ideas floating here. I am. I, I was thinking that you know you mentioned about. Um, needing a critical, uh, what do you call it? Uh, a critical thought. Yeah, your, your own critical thought. Uh, I won't say African, yeah. but yeah. 
critical thought, which is different from uh, the current uh, critical thought. Yes. Um, since you put it, what would it mean to you <coughs> about decolonizing uh, uh, the meanings of all the photographs, African uh, photographs of Africans and people of African continent? Oh, okay. Can you repeat the question? What, what would I think about uh, decolonizing? What it, what would it mean to you? when we yes. are talking about decolonizing uh, African photographs of African people, all photographs of African people of Africa.
the volume uh, configuration of power that was given to the images. Okay, let me see kind of if any people want to come back on this. Yeah, because what, yeah. Uh, what I hear is uh, um, a diversifying of your redistribution, no? With reinterpreting, deconstructing, reconstructing, redistributing, yeah. yeah. dismantling. Yeah, as all sorts of methods yeah. to, do, to, to actually do this redistribution. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. redistribution. Are, there, are there other responses? Yeah. Go ahead. Yes. Does it involve a, letting, a relinquishing of the power as well? Uh, how, does that, how does that happen? To, to, uh, is that to all of us? Or to uh, as a, as a non-native English speaker, I have to look up the word. Take over. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I wonder if it's very clear on my end. It is. It is. You're fine. Yeah. Can you hear us? No, no. There's a part I did hear. I think maybe if it, uh, if the speaker is closer to the microphone. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me yes. let me do my walking around again. I think. Uh, well, in the meantime, now that I know what it means, no, yeah. you go go, go and ask. No, 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 yeah. Let's but the, 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 um, I would say yes. A, a very big part of it is letting go of control, or even even the idea of control. So yes, I would say mm -hmm. very much. I would say me. Um, thanks so much for your contributions. It's been amazing. Um, so my follow-on question is about. From, uh, from a colonialist point of view, um, or a historically colonial point of view, how how do you see the process of letting go, or presumably the, the letting go of the power of the of the uh, of the individual library is important? Um, how do you think that should happen? Uh, there's a part letting go. Uh, um, but the line wasn't so clear. You said about letting go so of saying, the power. So I'm saying in order to decolonize the visual library, there also yes. has to be a relinquishing or a release of power from the people who have created the visual library. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, yes, that, that, yes, that is a possibility. Uh, that is a possibility, but uh, as historically, as people have learned, uh, you cannot hand over, you cannot e effectively and also efficiently hand over power. Uh, power has to either be acquired, taken, uh, power being, power even in its sense being a, a form of uh, energy and force has to be exerted. So it has to be claimed. The people who have to and uh, it is not uh, so in many cases uh, because the power will have to be in many forms uh, uh, reconfigured. It may not be at some level it may not be willingly handed over. I think uh, sometimes sometimes we may think of uh, power as being efficiently handed over because of democratic uh, systems that have come in place in, uh, in the modern world. But the true fact, uh, the, uh, the true picture is in most cases power had to be <coughs> taken over. I think you can still see like one example that will probably still exist uh, long into the future is uh, how generate how the generational shift of uh, power, like cultural power and trends and values, how that is usually taken from what like the younger generation has to almost uh, <coughs> possibly take it uh, from the older generation and form their own and, and make their own thing and form their own thing. Okay. So I'll, I'll keep I'll keep my mind open that. It can be handed. Uh, it can be handed over. The local people two elements. The local people who are handed over and those who don't hand over, and there will be those who will have to grab it. And it is okay. This is a brilliant sentence.
sentence, I think, to, 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 to finish the whole day with, maybe. Well, we still have a yeah. very yeah. brief meeting. Yes. Okay, one, one more. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, Sorry. 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 I just want to say also, hello? Yeah, yeah, you can hear you. Thank you so much for your <coughs> and Also, I'm having, my student is here. I'm telling him everything that you're saying on my phone because it's so interesting. And so, because he's planning to teach a session with teenagers, so he's also following. Um, so maybe you've already addressed this um, to some extent, but I wrote down something that you said in your talk, which was that it, it comes back to this uh, uh, theme about appropriation. Um, that you said a lot of the criticality of photography is based around Western thought and values and then you yep. emphasize this point about values are actually the important thing and it, it made me wonder well um have you seen examples of young people who are bringing a different value system to their interpretation or critique that you could that you could tell us any stories of because i'd be super interested to let you put uh, so now uh, I, I have to search for I will have to search for uh, I will have to search for examples. Uh, actually, yes, <laughs> I have to okay. search for examples and make this so we can. I think we can push that. Uh, we can continue that as a future discussion. I mean, that is something that really uh, I would really love to develop further. Uh, in a, uh, like also with other with other people uh, as a group as a collective, yeah. they are very much so. But yes, values, uh, examples of values. I would say uh, so. I have to like uh, become more of a. I have to uh, uh, bring in some cultural anthropology in looking for values or sociology. Or just uh, some kind of uh, system. Uh, yes, who can I? I, I who can I? I need, who can I? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you you, you, do, you, you do not have the, the answer today, singing. There's exciting things that I wrote yeah. about, so I really want to come back. We, we will, you've done incredible. <laughs> <laughs> so, just kind of, I think there's a few people who want to give your talk. <laughs> okay, and I will speak to you over the weekend. Okay. Yeah? Yes. Okay, bye bye yes. for now. Yes, I'm happy, I'm so glad I was able to attend. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye bye. Bye. Yes, and bye. everybody can get in touch with me online. Yeah. yeah. I think we and I will share it as well. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Yes. Bye. Brilliant. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you were saying? Um, yes, I was saying, I think the, the challenge of taking power, grabbing power, uh, exerting power uh, is, is one that it seems to not only be done in, uh, in other forms of com combating colonial his history, but also in photography. Um, and I think it will be interesting on what side of the fence people will sit. <laughs> uh, and I think people will make their own decisions uh, on if they want to be part of that conversation or if they rather stay uh, with an old value system that's breaking down. Um, so I think it's fascinating. I think it's a really fascinating time. Uh, yes, there's one more I'm, I'm just going to add a comment. I'm South African. I grew up in apartheid South Africa, but I spent a lot of my adult life in the Western world. Um, and, and just to say that I'm really quite pleased that in, in the last 10 years or so, 15 years, that African artists have been given a say in reclaiming Africa from an African point of view, because as people have mentioned, it's been a very Western. Mm -hmm. And in fact, in fact, I think one of the criticisms is that until quite recently, all the big news agencies who wanted to go into projects in Africa would choose the Western photographers or writers to go into it. They would not um, um, employ local African people who are equally qualified. So in that way, I think that things are changing and it's really good that there are so many because there are a lot, there's a lot of African talent that hasn't been tapped. And so, um, but, but Michelle, your, your, your things about those family photographs from the Victorian times or 
He died four days ago. I didn't know that. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, anyway, he was, there were very few in the apartheid system. I, I mean, I'm way past the decades from when the Victorian pictures were taken. But to maybe give you a very personal insight of me growing up in South Africa as a non-white, non-person South African, but of um, uh, Indian heritage, was that I think part of the problem in growing up is that we were, things were under white and black. And if you were white, everything worked on how good the whites were. So you were kind of taught that you had to be um, white to be able to succeed. You didn't have the opportunities. And I think from a very personal point of view, and I think I'm, I'm sort of sorry that I'm not that. I didn't know that my parents did that. Although I grew up in a, in a Muslim Indian environment, I was English speaking. My parents brought us up speaking English because they wanted us to have the best education. So, <coughs> for whatever that meant. So, you know, but now, um, that the, the, now that the post-94, uh, now that South Africa has become the rainbow nation with a lot of problems, um, lots of black artists have had a lot more opportunities. And even in my own family, I have uh, a, a cousin's daughter-in-law who's actually one of the top 20 um, South African, uh, African women photographers. So anyway, so, so coming to your questions of those Victorian pictures, they may or may not have been middle class, but they may just have been um, aspirations to what we were supposed to be. So because if you had, if you wanted to be good, you had to behave like white mm -hmm. people, and you had to kind of repress your own culture. So it's all about reclaiming identity. And I think a lot of the black artists are doing that and they want to show Africa from an African point of view, not from a Western perspective. Mm -hmm. I can just say one thing. I think it's an interesting point you made about how agencies used to send photographers. That's why Danielle started for women photographs. But there's also other, I know I have a couple of uh, Iraqi friends and they, they created an Iraqi photo agency to say you don't have to send white mm -hmm. photojournalists mm -hmm. into photograph. That there's a lot of, and this, I don't know, this is what an African psychology, but there's a lot of uh, agencies that have now started within countries mm -hmm. saying that mm -hmm. really you should hire yeah. local, people, yeah. local people, these photojournalists. Mm -hmm. So that's an interesting point that you made. Thank you for making that. Should we have wine? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's wine in the gallery. Uh, please come and join us to celebrate uh, the end of this day. Uh, thank you very much for coming all. It, it was an amazing day. I, I'm so pleased that it all came together. Sometimes you start something like that and you have no idea if it's going to work. But I have the feeling that we heard really amazing voices today. And thank you very much all for coming. On behalf of everyone here, I would like to thank you. Thank you. Thank you.